Kidnapping is a horrible crime which affects every kind of person, from children to adults, men, women, boys and girls. Luckily, not all of these stories end in tragedy. Hopefully, the story of these individuals rescued and the kind-hearted individuals who helped them find freedom will encourage us next time the unthinkable occurs. Number 10. Amanda Berry, Gina De Jesus, and Michelle Knight. Rescued May 6, 2013. The nightmare for these three young ladies started in 2002 when Michelle Knight disappeared in Cleveland at the age of 21. A year later, Amanda Berry vanished at 16, followed by Gina De Jesus in 2004 at the age of 14. Over the course of nearly 10 years, the captive women had multiple pregnancies that resulted in at least one live birth as well as multiple miscarriages. The women were featured on such programs as America's Most Wanted, but remained imprisoned by a sick man. Despite being bound with chains and rope at various points in their captivity, an opportunity for escape eventually came up. After their kidnapper, Ariel Castro, left the house that day, Barry began to scream for help. Getting the help of heroic neighbors, Angel Cordeo and Charles Ramsey, both of whom went to the house's front door. Barry then told Ramsey that she and her baby were being kept inside the house against her will. The two heroes then kicked a hole through the bottom of the storm door, which Barry crawled through while carrying her daughter. The now freed woman then went to the house of another neighbor and called 911. Police officers then went to the house and rescued the other two captive females. Number 9. J.C. Lee Dugard Rescued August 26, 2009 on June 10, 1991, 11-year-old J.C. Lee Dugard was abducted in South Lake Tahoe, California, while walking from home to a school bus stop. Despite extensive searches for the missing girl, she would not be freed from captivity until 18 years later. The break in the case came in August 2009, when a convicted sex offender named Philip Craig Garrido visited the campus of UC Berkeley, accompanied by two girls, one of whom was later identified as Dugard. Their strange behavior attracted unwanted attention that resulted in Garrido and his wife Nancy being arrested for kidnapping and other charges. The criminal couple ultimately pled guilty to Degard's kidnapping and sexual assault, with Philip receiving a 431-year jail sentence and a comparatively meager 36 years for his wife. Degard later wrote the book A Stolen Life, a memoir about her experiences, which you can buy and help contribute to the victim and her family. Number 8. Natasha Maria Kampucht escaped on August 23, 2006. Natasha Maria Kampuch was abducted at the age of 10 on March 2, 1998. Kampuch was held in a secret cellar by her kidnapper, Wolfgang Pricklepil, for more than eight years. The entrance to the cellar was concealed behind a cupboard. The small cellar had a door made of concrete and was reinforced with steel. Furthermore, the soundproof room had no windows, making escape even more difficult. Nevertheless, she finally escaped on August 23, 2006, when her kidnapper temporarily freed her from the cellar so that she could clean and vacuum his BMW in the garden. She seized the opportunity to run to a neighbor who called the police. The media attention led her to signing a contract with the Austrian channel Pulse 4 for her own talk show in 2008, becoming the new face of the Austrian Peter branch in 2009 and writing an autobiography called 3096 Days, published in September of 2010. As for her captor, he led the police on a chase that ended when he committed suicide by stepping in front of a moving train near the Vienna Northern Station. Number 7. Elizabeth Smart, found alive on March 12, 2003. On June 5, 2002, a knife-wielding Brian David Mitchell broke into the home of Elizabeth Smart and abducted her from her bedroom in Salt Lake City, Utah. She was 14 at the time. An extensive search and investigation into the kidnapping transpired, including television coverage on America's Most Wanted, where a drawing of the kidnapper was shown. The drawing was recognized by the family of Mitchell, who then provided the police with contemporary photographs of Mitchell. Next, on March 12, 2003, he was spotted traveling with Elizabeth Smart, disguised in a gray wig, sunglasses, and veil, and Wanda Eileen Barzi in Sandy, Utah, by a biker who had heard of the kidnapping on America's Most Wanted the night before. The biker alerted the police. Smart was promptly reunited with her family. Mitchell and Barzi were taken into custody as suspected kidnappers and eventually convicted. On August the 31st, Mitchell was transferred to federal prison to begin serving a life sentence for his crimes. The abduction of Elizabeth and her recovery were the subject of a made-for-television movie and a published book. Number 6. Katie Beers, found alive on January 13, 1993. Katie Beers was kidnapped in New York on December 28, 1992, two days before her 10th birthday. John Esposito, a family friend, lured the young girl home with the promise of birthday presents. There, he held her for 17 days in a concrete cell underneath his garage. On January 13, 1993, Esposito police uncovered the bunker where they found the still alive but traumatized girl. She later said that Esposito had raped her. He was sentenced to 15 years to life. In 2013, she, as so many other victims have done, wrote an emotionally compelling book about her experience. Number 5. Colleen Stan, escaped 1984. 
Colleen Stan was kidnapped and held as a sex slave by Cameron and Janice Hooker for over seven years between 1977 and 1984 in something described at her abductor's trial as unparalleled in FBI history. The nightmare began on May 19, 1977, when Cameron Hooker kidnapped 20-year-old Stan as she was hitchhiking to a friend's birthday party. For the next seven years, Stan was tortured and sexually abused in many despicable ways that we do not need to repeat here. In addition, Cameron led her to believe that she was being watched by a large, powerful organization organization called The Company, which would painfully torture and harm her if she ever tried to escape. Yet she finally did escape in 1984 after Janice Hooker grew concerned that her husband wanted to find additional slaves. Janice told Stan that Cameron was not ready to be part of the so-called company and later reported her husband to the police. The now freed Stan went on to live a productive life. She went to school for an accounting degree, married, had a daughter, and joined an organization to help abused women. As for Cameron Hooker, he received multiple consecutive sentences for sexual assaults, kidnapping, and using a knife in the process. He was sentenced to a total of 104 years in prison. Number 4. Stephen Stainer and Timothy White escaped March 1, 1980. Stephen Stainer was abducted in Merced, California at the age of seven. On the afternoon of December 4, 1972, Stainer was approached on his way home from school by a man named Irvin Edward Murphy, an acquaintance of convicted child rapist Kenneth Parnell. Parnell had passed himself off as an aspiring minister to the naive Murphy. Stainer was abducted and held until he was 14. At this point, as Stainer entered puberty, the pedophilic Parnell looked for a younger child to kidnap. He did that on February 14, 1980, with the kidnapping of five-year-old Timothy White, an event which deeply disturbed Stainer. On March 1, 1980, while Parnell was away at his night security job, Stainer escaped with White in tow. They hitchhiked to the nearest town and went into the police department for help. The next day, on March 2, 1980, Parnell was arrested on suspicion of abducting both boys. He was subsequently convicted and sentenced to seven years imprisonment. Stainer's kidnapping and its aftermath prompted California lawmakers to change state laws to allow consecutive prison terms in similar abduction cases. Sadly, Stainer died in 1989 in a motorcycle accident while driving home from work. He was survived by a wife and two children, a testament to his remarkable post-abduction recovery. Number 3. Patty Hearst, arrested September 1975 Patty Hearst, the granddaughter of famed publisher William Randolph Hearst, has the dubious distinction of being both a kidnapped victim and a convicted bank robber. Her kidnapping case is perhaps one of the most famous cases of Stockholm Syndrome in history. In 1974, she apparently joined a terrorist group known as the Symbionese Liberation Army after they had kidnapped her. The members seemed to have brainwashed her into taking part in a bank heist with other SLA members. She was apprehended, but after two years in prison, it became clear that she was as much a victim as anybody else. Her sentence was commuted by President Jimmy Carter, and she received a presidential pardon by Bill Clinton in his last official act before leaving office. Number 2. Frank Sinatra Jr. Freed December 1963 Singer Frank Sinatra Jr. is the son of legendary musician Frank Sinatra, as you might have guessed already. On December 8, 1963, the 19-year-old Sinatra was kidnapped at Haraz Lake Tahoe. A mere two days later, he was released after his father paid the $240,000 ransom that was demanded by the kidnappers. Barry Keenan, John Irwin, and Joe Amsler were later captured, prosecuted, and convicted, and they were sentenced to lengthy prison terms for kidnapping and ransoming the son of one of the most famous celebrities in the country. Number 1. Helen of Troy Finally, we have by far the most legendary and mysterious kidnapping of all, as we do not really know how much of the historical Helen stories are true. As it stands, she is known for at least two major abductions in Greek mythology. The first occurred when Theseus of Athens abducted Helen, believing her to be a daughter of Zeus. Despite the frequent depictions of Theseus in popular culture as a great hero, according to myths, he actually raped Helen. Subsequently, her brothers invaded Athens and reclaimed their sister for Sparta. In the more well-known incident, Helen, now married to the king of Sparta, was seduced by Prince Paris of Troy. After going with Paris to Troy, a massive alliance of Greek city-states journeyed to reclaim her for her king and husband. While there are rather divergent accounts of what happened next, in the original stories she was apparently returned to Sparta after the end of the Trojan War. It is a source of major debate as to whether and if these events took place, yet that's sort of beside the point as she is unquestionably the most famous rescued kidnapping victim in all of history. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Also, when you're subscribing, hit the bell icon because then you'll find out when we put out new videos, which is nice. If you'd like to see more from me, you can definitely check out one of the videos from the archives on this channel. Or I've got another channel called Biographics where we do kind of longer form biographies of people from history. Please do check that out if you think it could be your thing. And I'll see you next time.